This is Taylor Acosta, Associate Curator of European Art. And today's gallery talk focuses on one of the most celebrated paintings in Joslyn Art Museum's collection, Rembrandt's portrait of Dirk van Oss, painted around 1658. This large three quarter length portrait presents the sitter, a man of advanced age, at a desk filled with marks of his position and accomplishments, including an inkstand, quill, and silver seal. He wears a black jacket over which he has donned a long tabard. His narrow rectangular collar, skull cap, and cane topped by a silver knob further signal his high social standing. An inscription at the upper right identifies the subject as Dirk Van Oss III, a high-ranking local official of the newly created Beemster Polder. Van Oss had inherited great wealth from his father, Dirk Van Oss II, who was one of the most ambitious members of the Amsterdam merchant class in the early 17th century. The elder Van Oss helped organize the Dutch East India Company and was the principal investor in the company that reclaimed the Beemster Lake. The younger Van Oss's responsibilities related to the development of this new land, and Rembrandt's portrait may have been commissioned to commemorate Van Oss's 40th year in his official position. Rembrandt did not just describe his subjects, recording their features and denoting their status. Rather, he translated something of their psychological and emotional depth in a manner that still compels us over 350 years later. He painted this portrait late in his career, at a time when his personal and financial circumstances had greatly suffered. After the 1640s, he produced few portraits, choosing instead to concentrate on smaller history paintings and etchings. His acceptance then of commission from Dirk van Oss III is all the more notable. This honest portrayal emphasizes thoughtfulness, concern, and even humility, qualities rarely foregrounded in traditional portraits of the upper class. When the painting was acquired in 1942, an advisor to the museum offered the following prediction. We shall come to realize the profound significance of the Rembrandt the longer we live with it and study it. With just the right lighting, the portrait will begin to assert its great mystical and psychological qualities and will reveal itself to all as a great masterpiece. But in the intervening years, scholarly opinion shifted and the attribution of Joslyn's painting was called into question. By 1987, the painting was assigned to the School of Rembrandt and later moved into storage. These doubts about the rightful authorship were due in large part to severe damage and interventions by later hands that had accrued over the centuries. Indeed, this was a very different portrait for several years until a restoration campaign undertaken in 2012 and 2013 removed old layers of varnish and certain posthumous overpaintings and additions including embellishments to the sitter's costume. A later coat of arms that had been painted in the upper right corner was considered to be of historic value and thus retained. Areas of damage and loss were carefully retouched using what remained of the original painting as a guide. This process returned the portrait close to its original appearance and allowed for a more serious assessment of its quality, particularly the brushwork, color, and modeling of the sitter's face all characteristic of Rembrandt's hand and the attribution to the master was confirmed. The reintroduction of the portrait of Dirk van Oss to the Rembrandt scholarly corpus and to Joslyn Art Museum's galleries was celebrated in the Omaha community and beyond. But as scholars have since suggested, the painting's greatest significance may lie in what it reveals about Rembrandt's approach to portraiture, the way he worked both with and against established conventions in the later years of his life. Rembrandt may have seen something of himself in Van Oss, an elderly man reflecting on his life. And the painting he completed is at once an impressive public portrait of a civic leader and a contemplative private portrayal of an aged man occupied by his own thoughts.